We're live, guys. So let's do this very quickly because I have to be somewhere. So I thought, okay, that'll force me to um, go quicker in this stream. Let's, see, let's get this up a little higher. What's up, everyone? Well, the one person. <laughs> Lavender. Valerie. Yeah. What's up, everyone, as you guys are coming in? So uh, I thought I would definitely talk about calories because I think that's a really interesting subject. Um, and I thought I would do just a quick little version of it because I'm trying to do them every other day, although I probably won't make it every day, but I thought it'd be fun to try to. Hey, Sandy. Bam. Bam. So funny, on my last video, I was all triggered because I thought somebody was saying something you know, because we get a lot of trolls. YouTubers, YouTubers get a lot of trolls. And this one's like, not everybody's trying to attack you. I was like, oh, thank you so much. I had no idea what it's like to be on the internet for 10 years. What's up, Elisa? Blessings back to you. Hearts. Okay, guys, so let's talk about some calories, how to calculate calories to lose weight on, lose weight on keto. It's such a great subject because you don't calculate any calories. So I want to just go into that description for a second and talk about what people perceive as calories. So you have to think, you guys, if we lived in the nature, we wouldn't have that many vegetables. I'm not going to lie. In fact, they wouldn't be that excited about vegetables because they'd want like sustenance, right? So they want some brain, some eyes, some tongue, some organ meats. That would be amazing, right? Some fat. Should I like it so I checked in. Thank you for already liking it. It's all about insulin. Yes, it's all about insulin. So you guys, um, people keep asking me this question about calories. So I try to kind of put it in. Hit the likes, please. Yes. Ah, uh, thank you, Deb. Deborah's in the house. My moderator. She says to like the chat collapse the chat window, hit the thumbs up, then pe then reopen the chat window. Ah, uh, thank you, Yvette, thank you so much. I try to. Even if I make a fool out of myself, it can happen, but at least it's me, it's not antiquated. Okay guys, so let's talk about the calories so you guys have a better understanding of the whole calorie thing. Like has been hit. Yes, thank you, Helen. So a lot of you guys are very confused on how to lose weight on keto, which this really isn't a weight loss video. It's more about trying to understand calories and that you don't measure calories in a unit of heat by one degree. You don't do that. What you do is factor in your metabolism. Now, plants don't have a lot of calories. Um, they don't have a lot of robust sustenance to them. So that's the reason why if you ate a bunch of broccoli all the time, you'd be hungry. Very, very hungry. So do we factor in that uh, carbohydrates have uh, four calories per gram and, and uh, fats have nine? No. So I've explained this before that you could take uh, 500 calories from cookies or potato chips, even it's a better visual, or you could take 500 calories from pork belly or ribeye. What's up, everyone? You beat me. What is it? You beat me to it. There's a need to be love, love button. LOL. Okay. Thank you guys are like, hit that like button. Yes. Because we got, uh, what's up? So um, a lot of you guys seem to be very confused on um, how you should factor in your macros on keto. So a lot of people eat way too little fat and just because they're hungry they start going ham on the ham on the protein and that's problematic so um is this right so the problem with you guys is that you'll do too little um uh you'll do too little of the right macros in terms of 
getting your fats high, getting your protein moderate, and your carbohydrates obviously have to be low. And as you guys know, the more I coach people, the more plant sensitivities so many people have. So I was talking to a woman today in my gym who has fibromyalgia, and she straight up said, when I don't eat, my symptoms go down. When I eat, my symptoms go up. And I tried to uh, deconstruct what she eats to kind of explain it equipment to the body to digest the anti-nutrients in plants and some have the equipment and they're fine as long as they don't go overboard. So uh, people think, well, I'll just uh, raise my protein because if I raise my carbohydrates, I'm not going to be ketotic. But with that said, you guys, you have to factor in like if you take the 500 calories from potato chips and 500 calories from uh, a really fatty meat that the way your body has to digest, use the calories is completely different even though they have the same number. So, um, uh, cook, I mean, obviously potato chips are already digesting with amylase in your saliva. Pull over. <laughs> Sirens every time. Okay. And uh, the people who, um, who've got, okay, so I'm thinking here like, Let's say that you are quasi insulin resistant, um, you eat your potato chips really, really fast, they get down into the stomach and they don't have to be digested very much in the stomach so they shoot straight into the small intestine and into the bloodstream. And if you take, which is gonna spike up your blood sugar infinitely high, just boom, really, really, really high. And then if you take 500 calories from pork belly, which is can be up to 90%, fat, so high fat, right, nine, nine, to, nine calories to the one gram, that essentially they both are high in calories, so you should exactly the same store or burn, depending on your activity, uh, you should be able to store or burn exactly the same, which makes zero sense. The sugar or maybe honey kick you out of ketosis. Yes. So hold on there, Lavender. I'm trying to get through this little thing and then take your guys' comments and questions and then bounce because I got to learn how to do shorter streams. But uh, thank you, Andrew. So with that said, um, you guys keep thinking, well, if I just do less calories, which means less fat and it's a high fat diet, that doesn't make any sense. How can you do a high fat diet and keep your fat slow because you're worried about weight loss? So then there's no, there's no science behind any of this. There's no biology. There's no physiology. It's just like eat less. And that means I have to eat less fat because that's less calories and I'll be ketotic. No, that's not how it works. Um, chicharrones. Uh, um, chicharrones actually, they don't have a lot of fat when they're bought in the store. It's like the true you know, Tex-Mex, Chicharrones, those are the ones with like the meat still on it. Um, those would be considered more like real pork rinds, real fat and real meat on it. But with, I digress. The point is that uh, I want you guys to really understand calories very clearly. So you think that if you eat a bunch of pork belly, you should in theory become fat because it's the same amount of fat or calories that are in cookies. But a lot of you guys are having problems with your pancreas, with your insulin regulation, with your leptin hormone signaling, with your thyroid, with the hypothalamus, pituitary. Um, and nobody talks about this kind of stuff, which is like very bizarre to me because you could take my height and my weight, my age, and because I'm 51, um, and then um, put me next to a girl who's my height and my weight and 20 years younger or 30 and assumably she's going to burn more calories than me if we do the same amount of output. But it all comes down to the health of your metabolism, how many GLUT4 receptor development you have, which also is very, very important. So this, this is the regulation of insulin. Um, how well I sleep at night because a lot of people become insulin resistant at night. Hence, people are having the early morning dawns effect with high blood sugar. And uh, also, uh, my body fat percentage and lean muscle mass is going to be indicative too because 
am I estrogen dominant? Because estrogen creates more fat within the fat cell. And there's a loop, there's a negative loop to that, right? Your fats, you have uh, triglycerides stored in your fat cells and then they start producing estrogen and then the estrogen starts to create more fat within the cell. And that's why so many women are just this big in this area, right? In this here area, they're like this big. So, with that said, people go on the keto diet, they don't eat enough fat. What they don't realize is that you have to first convert dietary fat into ketones via the liver. So if you don't eat enough dietary fat, then you can't stimulate ketosis. Not, um, not enough viable ketones to actually be used into the Krebs cycle and pass the blood brain barrier. So this is the problem with a lot of people who are doing the ketogenic diet and they just, cause it's so popular right now, it's so trendy. And then people just eat poor quality food because that's not discussed often. Uh, people don't factor in their own metabolic health before. So if you're the same weight as me, but who's got more lean muscle mass, my muscle is gonna produce more GLUT4 uh, receptor sites. And then therefore I'm able to uptake and use glucose and a girl my height and weight, which I find so many women are my height and weight with a lot more body fat. And then they've got more estrogen, and so therefore their insulin is high and they store fat. But we do the same output of energy. And, but our metabolism is completely different. And so we've gotta go more down the science hole and try to understand our individual physiology. And that's the problem with you guys aren't talking about physiology you're talking about if I eat just layman's terms, okay, if I eat a lot of calories, then I'm not going to lose weight. But that's nonsensical because it's what your body does with the calories. It's not the calories. It's what it does with the calories. So if I eat 500 calories from cookies, that's going to spike my insulin. I don't have to digest this cookie or crackers very much. And so this is going to shoot up into the bloodstream very, 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 very quickly Whoop, there goes insulin because insulin doesn't understand your glucose, your blood sugar beyond five to 10 grams. Once you start getting up to 12 and 13 within the bloodstream, the body, well, the body only tries to hold five grams per like amount of food that you eat because if your blood, blood sugar just keeps getting too high. But let's say that if your blood sugar is uh, sitting at what, uh, 120 milligrams per deciliter, insulin has to shoot way higher then what's in the blood to then get it out because if it doesn't get it out of the blood are you gonna have some health issues like coma yes like neuropathy like a heart disease like you're just gonna have develop health issues from chronic too, too high blood sugar and so because you can't poop or pee out this uh, glucose from the cookies uh, within the two hours because within the two hours it's going from your stomach into the into the uh, small intestine and you're not going to get it through the whole digestive tract to you know get it down and then lower it and then poop it out so your body stores it in your fat cells via insulin so pork belly is not going to do that you guys because your insulin is not going to spike as high even though meat can spike your glucose yes right within the hour but you don't factor within the hour. You factor within the second to third hour because blue glucose always spikes, even if you do a ketogenic diet and then it drops and you want that drop to be the fasted AM number. So if you're eating a meal like lunch and you woke up in the morning and your blood sugar was 82 milligrams per deciliter and then you have, um, uh, you wake up and it's this number and then you wait and then you have lunch later, sorry, you have lunch and your blood sugar shoots up to, you know, a hundred milligrams per deciliter within the blood. As long as it drops back down after the second ish hour, you're fine. It should shoot up to about 90, 80, 88 to 90 something for somebody who's very uh, metabolically strong and then drops back down to that fasted number. So a lot of you guys aren't fact are not factoring in these types of things nor are you factoring in what's going on with your reproductive hormones. If you're estrogen dominant, that's going to play a role. So people just deprive themselves of food and do a lot of cardio. 
their, their adrenals are overtaxed. And so when you're already a cortisol driven fasting and a lot of exercise is going to raise the cortisol even more, which is going to make your body want to store more estrogen. And that's why so women that so many women that I coach, they literally can can't have to eat almost nothing to maintain their weight, let alone drop it, guys, because a lot of men don't understand this concept why some women are so big. They don't understand it. It's because literally the women, they, they develop thyroid issues, leptin issues, leptin signaling issues, right? Because having this sort of damage to the hypothalamus pituitary signaling. So the body, you're always hungry and the body doesn't understand that it doesn't need to store fat because there's food everywhere. So, um, there's no such thing as vegan and keto. I'm sorry. You can't, that's, there's, there's the, the physiology. It can't happen. I'm sorry. I've tried. It doesn't work. And yeah, veganism is a high carb diet. So you need to do a high animal fat diet. I would say no macadamia nuts. I have it, had it allowed for a minute, but now I'm taking it out. I mean, should this stream, it should have been just like macros. I wanted to explain calories to you guys because I have so many people not eat then do a bunch of exercise like the intermittent fasting, then they crash, so they have hypoglycemia, and even though the blood sugar is 60 milligrams per deciliter, they are still hypoglycemic, right? And that will literally, boop, estrogen, and in men, and you just get flabby. You don't actually, you just get flabby. You don't actually burn the fat. No, you should not be hungry if you're eating high fat, as long as it's not ending up in the toilet. So if you got greasy floating stool on keto, you'll probably be hungry because you're not uptaking that fat, it's ending up in the toilet. I learned all of this information, Elena, because I've been doing this for almost 11 years. So you learn by osmosis and a lot of reading and a lot of working with people because if, if like I've worked with almost 3000 people if you keep talking to people and they're like, my hair is sh shedding, like I'm constipated, I have loose stool, I have food in my stool, I'm tired, I have eczema, I have shingles, right? I have psoriasis, I have high blood pressure, I have insulin resistance, I can't sleep at night, I can't gain any muscle, I have depression, I have ADD, I have ADHD, I have bipolarism. If you keep talking to the same people that have the same symptoms and you start asking them, what do you eat? What do you do? And what's your life like? And then you know a little bit of biology. If physiology is not that hard to put together, you guys, I'm telling you, it is not that hard. A doctor has seven minutes in the uh, exam room to talk to you. And I talk for, to people over an hour in some of my consultations. So I have an hour consultation just sitting down and talking to people. You're going to learn so much. Get them. Get them, Deborah. Deborah, Deborah's got her troll out there. We good, guys. Don't worry. Have you heard of high? What is it? Heard of higher heart rate? On, yeah, that's from lack of potassium. That's simple. That's simple stuff. So I just want you guys to understand. First, you have to adapt. To adapt, you have to eat high fat because your body's going to convert the fat first into ketones via the liver to get up in the Krebs cycle. It's not about aesthetics in the beginning, you guys. It's not about how much fat that you know coffee. No coffee. It's not about how much fat um, that you're consuming if it's going to make you gain or lose weight. In the very beginning, it's about regulating your blood sugar. If you don't regulate your blood sugar and it remains high, because I've told, I've said this in 20 streams, if your blood sugar is high, then your insulin is high. Insulin's going to store fat. So it's all about insulin. Don't believe me? Read some Gary Taub stuff. It's all about your insulin and your estrogen. And then everything around that is based around the stress that you're going through in life. Oh, you got the wrong one. Oops. Uh, I think you can unblock them or I can later. Sorry if you got the wrong per person. No plain black coffee. That's garbage. Unless you would just literally, oh, you did. Okay. Um, so, um, forget about calories. Forget about it. Learn about your metabolism. If you have thyroid disorder, if you have Hashi's or hypothyroidism, I don't care how much food that you don't eat and how much exercise you eat, you're going to keep storing and getting bigger. And then your hair is going to fall out and your reproductive 
hormones are going to be out of order and you're going to feel tired and develop other third for autoimmune issues just for the just for the lack of not eating enough food so remember you guys can make blood sugar that spikes your insulin on eating no carbs and low calorie you can have high blood sugar on eating nothing if your adrenals and if your body's stressed enough and you're a cortisol slathered person you could have high blood sugar and be there was this woman in my gym for she used to work out at my gym for years and she was so anorexic but she had love handles and she was flabby all around the middle but arms were like tiny legs were tiny neck was tiny face was all gluconeogenicitized because her body was storing fat in the middle to survive i'm on the corner of her with butter my eyes are black heart palps yeah you have a look that's the problem people do the carnivore diet i assume and they are, their potassium storages are low and then there's not a lot of potassium in just the meat. So you have to find other ways to get your potassium in or you're gonna feel those heart palps. Yeah, but if somebody's doing carnivore, they might be doing it because they have, you know, uh, anti-nutrient allergies or sensitivities. And so therefore eating a bunch of high plant, like spinach would just, like if they have a oxalate or uh, as I said, oxalyl, axial factor, bacteria deficiency they may just little double over and feel horrible on eating spinach high in potassium it's complicated you guys it's complicated we got a hundred people watching and only 63 likes can we get the likes up guys because i did not want to stream today i don't think i almost ever want to stream but i did because i said to someone on my instagram which is stephanie ketogenic that i was going to live stream every other day and i was like oh well that'd be today Okay, I have hypo, hyper, oh, you have hyperthyroid. My doctor told me to stick with the diet and we'll do more blood work next month. He said the diet should help, but to eat regular if not hungry. Okay, so with hyper, did I get it right? Yeah, you have hyperthyroidism, which is like your metabolism. And it's really crazy because hyperthyroidism is a little bit more dangerous. It's like your eyeballs come push out and you go up to hyper and then you drop down and uh the thyroid is just you could go from hyper into hashis which is not good um but uh you really have to eat a lot of fat as a hyperthyroid person and you have to get a lot of sleep because hyperthyroid is hyper people you got to literally learn how to breathe correctly and get your uh, uh heart rate stable on uh, being hyperthyroid trouble sleeping what is it okay so i'm gonna answer your guys question and get out of here not you guys don't care about calorie state Dang it. Let's see here, guys. Sorry. Uh, I have hyper. I don't care about right that. Trouble sleeping, tongue coating. I don't get it. Does it mean candida, thrush? Uh, are you. You are the bomb. Ah, thank you, Brian. Uh, Lisa's like, like it up! You know what, you guys? Seriously, there's still. Like, there's still 30 people that need to like this stream. You don't need to, but I'd be very honored if you did. Just say. Okay, let's see. Steph, so said I have to quit keto. Hypoglycemia is killing me. Shala. Oh, I'm sorry. You know? Unfortunately, you can't do keto if you can't get your stress down. If you can't get your stress down, your blood sugar remains dysregulated and people have chronic hypoglycemia. Also, uh, also have hyper hyper but hypo symptoms Ooh, that sucks and so let's see can l-glutamine make me retain water i have no idea i mean you guys if you're taking l-glutamine in supplementation form i don't know when man gets his little hands on things and it's not mother nature who knows what about high blood pressure ronald you have to put into context yes have you worked with people about to go in an armed forces boot camp? No, not admittedly. Uh, but I mean, I've worked with athletes and whatnot, but I, they're kind of different. Um, how can someone continue keto if what, their alignment intake, what, intake is out? of their control i'm not sure what you mean so christina can you be a little bit more explanatory i'm not really sure what you mean 
Blood sugar 65 is too low. Ketones only. Ooh, you are super hyperglycemic. Scotty, that's not good. I don't know, Scott. You can't, Scotty, you can't say, like, the body's complicated. People are like, oh, you know, here are my numbers. You cannot assess the body just in numbers. It's like you got to talk about your symptoms, your lifestyle, who you are. It's not enough, Scotty. I'm sorry. I ate 2,000 calories yesterday, included 200 grams of fat, and lost two pounds, but worried about how butter affects the heart. Donna, are you Swedish? Eklund. It's probably some Michigan Swede that's not really Swedish. Um, butter makes the heart stronger. Don't believe the cholesterol BS garbage. I feel so bad for you guys who brainwashed into that ridiculousness that a bag of potato chips is safer than something that's from Mother Nature. Incredible. Okay, I'm reading Fasting Effects. Lowers T3. Katie, who, who, who wrote this ridiculousness? If you intermittent fast with hop, hypo, hy, hashis, hyper, hypo, you're going to frack yourself up. Thank you, LaShonda, who writes, can you use no salt? I don't like no salt because it's a, it's a chemical. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you guys, you got to learn how to like fix your gut so you have a better potassium reserves. Love you, Steph, and you're such a motivation to me. Thank you so much, LaShonda. No, I'm not really into this no salt na nonsense. It's, it's like, what is it? It's like potassium chloride or something like that. Black eyes? You mean black eyes? Nobody has black eyes? Black eyes, watery eyes. What, what, I don't know what you mean by black eyes. Anybody understand? You mean like a horror movie, black eyes? Bad sleep, eating carnivore, and butter. Um, what is it? Do you mean supplementing potassium, citrate, and salt? From what? What source are you getting potassium citrate? Carnivore for a month, keto for seven months before. Uh, I don't know what you're doing for the carnivore diet. I don't know what cuts of meat, what quality of meat. I don't know uh, if you've tried to get your potassium from, uh, if you have any aversion to plant source foods, why are you doing carnivore? All these things matter. We got a hundred and, well, we have 114. Can we get the likes up, guys? At least to get over 100 people. Oh, you're not fasting. Oh, black rings around my eyes. Child, you didn't say that. You said black eyes. <laughs> Okay, the economic, uh, was it, forbids me from keto. I'm still fascinated. Okay, well, you know what? On my streams, you can just learn about the body because not everybody has to do keto. Driving for two minutes. Ah, do your, don't crash, Deborah. do your thing. Okay, so after one of your videos, I'm trying to eat full block of curry gold butter almost there. All right, Foxy Roxy. Look, I'm not saying that people have to eat a block of curry gold. But it's just an example to get their fats high. You can also get your fats from uh, the meat fats. Like, you know, people are doing pork jowl and tongue and, and or beef tongue and pork belly and other fats that are high, a ribeye, <clears throat> and also getting their fats over 200 from animal fat, not just the uh, butter. Do you use... Goals, I think. No, never even heard of it. Do you think it's important to measure blood sugar? Hold on, does it say blood sugar as well as ketones or glucose meters? Just no, it has to be both. Alexandra, how do you say your name? Okay, three avocados per day is okay. It should be fine. You can use your glucometer to see if you make your blood sugar spikes. As long as you don't have a latex allergy, it should be fine. Tongue has a yellowish coating. Honey, that is straight up the rush. That's fungus on the tongue. How often do you recommend organ meats? I love liver. Liver? liver? Um, I eat them every day, so it's a, it's a personal choice. The Keto Queen is here for us again. Thank you, Paula. Thank you so much. I try. I try. Even though people are like, I didn't know you existed. I was like, okay, well, I was one of the first people talking about this stupid thing, and now I'm just buried under a bunch of videos. Yeah, please tell me which one talks about Hashimoto's and fasting. Who? Me. Which which what person? I don't know what you're talking about. Smoke? No. I don't put carcinogens in my body. Sorry. 
Okay, what are the most essential pieces of compassion advice you would give to someone that wants to improve their health in emotional, physical, and prepare to make some major changes? I would say to get your gut flora and balance because a lot of, because the vagus nerve is connected to the, uh, to your gut, right? The, the large intestine all the way down there. I really feel, and to get your stress down, but I really feel that people, um, their guts are so screwed up and it's so affected to people's uh, lack of compassion, um, depression, uh, just impatience, but also diaphragmatic breathing. So for me, compassion comes, starts from the, the physiology and the circadian rhythm. And then it, once you get those in order, you can start uh, being more mindful and more conscious. Okay, let's see if, if they do give you keto friendly foods at boot camp, protein will not be grass fed. Yeah, that kind of sucks. I mean, I don't know what to say, what kind of food they, you have to eat a lot of fat. And I don't know if you're gonna get that much fat on boot camp. Unless it's like margarine or something. You're back. Okay. Uh, if I book a consult, can you fix me? Escobar, it's not that simple. I definitely will do my best to give you the knowledge to, for you to fix yourself. Um, what kind of intermittent fasting do you like? None. You want to intermittent fast and destroy your body? That's the quickest way to do it. <laughs> Alexandra. Alexandra? Oxandra is right. No, it's not that I don't like it, you guys. The bi biology and all the people that I've ever coached who've done it have a rebound of blood sugar, right? Because you become gluconeogenic. Yes. Okay, so we're at 31 minutes. How does intermittent fasting hurt your body? I never heard of this before. Don't you kidding me? Yo, sorry guys that I'm repeating myself. Do you have any tips for type 1 diabetes? Yes, type 1 diabetes, eat a ton of fat, uh, use a dual glucometer. You do keto is the same as everyone else, to be honest. But if you're going to do keto as a type 1, really, 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 really make sure that you can get your stress down in the first when you first do it. Because you can't, you know, type 1s who don't eat can have their ketones get too high and become acidic. The acidosis only for type ones. Now the the intermittent fasting is like this. I'm gonna explain this very very quickly. So get your notepad. Number one, intermittent fasting is food deprivation. Number two, our bodies are like cars and they need gasoline when you move your body. So you move your body and there's no gasoline. Where your body gonna get its energy from, honey? When you are uh, intermittent fasting, so big cups of veggies. Especially not now, after what I've been learning about people with autoimmunity. Oh, heck no. You know, I wanted to add the two L's, but I digress. So you go and you drive a Bugatti or Lamborghini with no gas in the tank and your body doesn't know how to use ketones. Where are you going to get your energy from? Fat? Your body's not ketotic. Muscle. It's really easy to convert muscle into glucose because your brain has been primed and conditioned to burn glucose. That's right. So people, okay, and that's why people start to get hair loss, fasting, right? Thyroid gets freaked out. You're not in ketosis. You think you're in ketosis, but you're not. You're not. Th that word is thrown around too loosely. Is your body taking ketones and converting it into acetoacetate and getting into the blood brain barrier? To, you got like this energy, 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 energy. Are you like that? Oh, sorry. I don't like when people say, oh, I'm in ketosis. Well, I don't know what you look to talk to me, right? I have a keto Facebook group. Go to my keto Facebook group and we'll do a split screen and let me screen and let's talk. And I will deconstruct whatever you've learned and show you in two seconds, you're not in ketosis. I don't mean to be a rude person. I have the keto mojo. It tests ketones and I feel pretty good. Pretty good. And everybody that does keto feels pretty good and often in many ways, the group, uh, you can join through my website, which is stephanieperson.com. You're actually being cool. And I'm just being a little smart ass, but, um, uh, you're not keto adapted. There's a difference between producing ketone. I mean, yes, 
producing ketones, which is considered to be uh, in ketosis because you're making ketones, but they can end up in the toilet. And if you end up in the toilet, that can irritate the thyroid and your adrenals. So when you're saying, I feel pretty good, hang out with me for a day on, uh, while you're fasting and we'll see how good you feel at the end of the day. Let's just see how you feel because I'm going to take you through, boom, the day, right? We're going to hit it hard. We're going to hit it hard and then test your blood sugar post-workout. Then we'll see what happens. Okay. To subscribe to our Facebook page, go to our website, stephanieperson.com. Thank you, Deborah. Um, you guys come a little bit, you know, that you just are constantly inundated with the same thing. So like your brain's like, ah, ah, ah. Okay, Steph, um, how do you go about having enough fat for two weeks? Do you purchase 14 bars of Kerrygold? Pretty much. <laughs> um, you could also do rendered fat. You can take beef tallow, render it down, slap it on your plate. You could do uh, lard, easy to purchase, pastured lard. Take big slabs of it, throw it on your food. Good to go. 14 grams of fat per tablespoon. Do you guys, okay. Do you think about a glass of wine on, no, why would I do that? Especially wine is so bad for women. Oh, it's so bad for women, especially. No, I haven't drinking any alcohol in almost 11 years of doing keto strict. Okay, you'll definitely subscribe. Yeah, I think you'll really love the course page if I, you know, take myself down three notches. I think you'll really enjoy the course page. And I get so many people like, why not, not intermittent fasting, like prove it. And then you're just like, you just get like, oh my God, you guys, when you fast, if you're not ketotic, where's your body going to get its energy from? Are you going to burn body fat? Are you just, just going to burn body fat? You're not going to be gluconeogenic. You should be shredded then shredded if it was that simple. Okay. How much blood sugar after working out? Uh, depends on what your fasted number is. So you want to be in a ketotic range at 69, uh, 69 milligrams per deciliter to 80. That would make you ketotic post-workout because my blood sugar drops post-workout and a lot of people who've got adrenal insufficiencies, it'll spike. Okay, do you, what is it? Do you know, no, I don't know him. I don't know all the new people popping up. You guys, I've been on the internet talking about this for almost seven years. I've been doing it for 10. I was working with clients on keto before I went online. And uh, I've never heard a lot of the people that are brought up. Is it possible to be a vegan and follow the keto diet? No, I'm sorry. Is she, I think you, you, it's not, it's not. Especially, and I don't even wanna to go too far into keto, the veganism because that's, it's over there. But I've tried to get several people to adapt on plant fats. It just didn't work. The blood sugar was so unstable. Okay, you've been 165 for 20 years. Okay. Keto carnivore with coconut flour. That's not carnivore then. You don't need fiber if you have a good gut. You don't need fiber if you've got good gut balance, if you don't have small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. Um, fiber can be, is it insoluble fiber can pretty be pretty rough on that. Actually soluble as well. Can you keto? Yes, you can do keto if you're pregnant, but it's got to be done really well or else don't do it. Well, in the context of your macros, your sleep, your rest, your diaphragmatic breathing, like everything that goes along um, with being pregnant and the stress on the body of being pregnant. Is it normal to have higher body temperature on keto? Some people, and sometimes that's an indication, but it's, it's, it's not, it's pseudoscience that when your temperature rises, then you could be burning more fat. I wouldn't do hot sauce, Dom, to be honest, unless it's like, think just a little bit. Um, but you know, that's your guys' choice. How many foods a day? I don't know, kind of rotate my meats more and my fats. So three, four. Is it okay for someone dealing with Lyme disease and mold? Oh, it's so good, Mike. Like I've seen people with Lyme's do so well on keto. It's amazing, and fibromyalgia. And insulin resistance and type two, type one and type two diabetes. What would okay? What would be the suggestions for ve for a vegan? Thanks for taking. As a vegan, I would just eat whole foods. I mean, I'm not a vegan expert. What am I saying? But like from a judgmental outside position, I would um, 
I would eat, I, first I'd find out if you have any sensitivities to plants, because often we do, everybody. And then I would uh, take easier to digest plant source foods and I wouldn't do raw. Rheumatoid arthritis, yes, RA. What's your breakfast and lunch, dinner like? Um, you guys know I've been eating like, I've been eating liver and flat meat. I've been eating the flat meat raw and the liver sauteed with butter. Like that's my breakfast. Um, what was the other person would they ask? You guys are asking hardcore and I'm trying to get off. For vegan. Oh, oh yeah, for vegan, I would keep your fats high. I would do monounsaturated fats like I'm not a nut person, but uh, macadamia nuts and avocados if you don't have a latex allergy. Um, rather than a bunch of uh, omega-6 nuts like almonds and pistachios and the rest of them. And I would ooh, do cooked vegetables and not raw. I'd be and I would eat like lower glycemic, less fructose uh, fruits rather than anything that's super sweet. Okay, so this, are you in the ketosis of producing ketones and pea, strip, pea strips don't work? Then Ben, what? Logan Sneed thinks you are in keto. Oh, Lord have mercy. Child, no. Urine strips are ketones leaving the body. That's why people use blood. I don't even know who this dude is. I can't, I can't, I can't like deal with this person. I don't even know who he is. And you guys know I don't want to start getting snarky with somebody I don't even know. But that information you put there about him is absolutely laughable and ridiculous. Yeah, when pe there are a lot of good people. I think that uh, Dr. Er I think he's a good person. Literally as a person, as his demeanor, he's chill. He seems pleasurable, kind. I mean, kind like his, his energy seems very, very nice and chill. But the information about keto is just so ill and wrong. It just makes me tick. Happy, oh, happy birthday, Keishelle. I didn't know it was your birthday. Happy birthday. Doctor has me on love with thyroxin for your thyroid because my thyroid isn't producing what it's supposed to. It's, I absolutely emphatically disagree with pharmaceutical ways to deal with the thyroid. They often don't work and it's a toxin. If you have to do medication to start with, I mean, you should talk to your doctor about armor and you should really figure out ways to potentially go off if I were you, because I'm not supposed to, like, allegedly, I can't tell you what to do. You'll have a more difficult time on levothyroxine, on thyroxine. What supplements do you recommend to sleep better? Uh, magnesium glycinate. And I recommend uh, connecting to the circadian rhythm, which is not a supplement. Breathing correctly, which is not a supplement. Using blue blockers, which is not really a supplement. Those are better ways. And changing the mind. was just answering a question about him. Who? About the Logan dude? Sorry, I'm late on the responses. Parental, what the what? What is that? Parental, prenat, prenatal? I don't know what that is. Sorry. So I keep seeing if there's more questions, but that's it. And it's kind of a good time to stop soon. What time is it? Prenatal? Prenatal. Never heard of it. I don't like, I like vitamins from real food just to be keeping it square. You're going to find amazing vitamins in liver and prenatal. Oh, they wrote it wrong. Uh, oh, prenatal. Sorry, I was pronouncing it wrong. I just, bleh, sorry, prenatal. Um, pregnant vitamins. I'm not a pregnant woman, nor have I ever been, so I'm not going to even talk about that. But I would definitely look at what's in prenatal uh, vitamins and see if you can find it from its original source. Definitely. For a newbie, is there... 
is there one killer book you would recommend to someone? I think, um, no, there's not one killer book. I love books that, like Sally Fallon has a new book um, that's really great talking about our digestive tracts, our, you know, as we live before in the past, how our bodies are. Yeah, yeah, I got the prenatal, sorry. It's like when I'm reading too much, you just read wrong. It just happens sometimes. Uh, it's not about how much sleep, it's about how many cycles of, of uh, deep and REM sleep. So probably four cycles would be amazing. How many calories to eat when bulking? So definitely, was it Casey Fitted? You should definitely check out my the beginning of this video because calories don't matter. So it's not about bulking. You can't, you can't, you don't think in terms of bulking. Think in terms of blood sugar. Think in terms of your testosterone and your estrogen and think in terms of if you're insulin resistant and if you got enough glut for re uh, receptor development if you get enough sleep think like that because the whole bulking ga gaining muscle on keto is about uh not being gluconeogenic and being more um in an anabolic phase of your growth and um i cringe if i watch other channels now Oh, you are absolutely amazing. Aw, thank you, Alan. That's really sweet. That is really sweet, you guys, because I've been around so long, and I just get annoyed when I see other stuff. And then, like, you don't want your ego to be involved with it, but you're like, man, I've been working so hard to tell people stuff they don't want to hear. And I, it's not that I want to be the bearer of you got to work hard. You'll be coming to London, yes. Yes, I will be coming to London next summer. Yeah, Casey Fitty. I would definitely watch more because it's not it's not about your metabolism. It's about your insulin. If you tested your blood sugar and it ran really, really high, you're going to store more fat than build muscle because especially if you test your blood sugar or insulin, if you test your blood sugar and you have low carbs and your blood sugar is running in the 90s or over 100, you're storing fat and you're in burning of your muscle rather than bulking. That's why some people feel flat when they do keto with their muscle because they're doing it the wrong way. Respect this lady, uh, lady's absolute ability to drill through the questions, energy. And sometimes I read it right, wrong, you guys. So I apologize for that. And you just have to tell me if I read it wrong and then I'll correct myself. Can too few carbs be problematic when being keto? Absolutely not, Gins. Like you could do, like people are doing carnivore and it's amazing. Like full carnivore, no plants and fats ketotic and protein still moderate to low and i've been testing this with people on the course page and you can be keto carnivore but you uh okay so hey steph check out a book on net what net written 100 years ago called the diabetic cookery by rebecca w uh open helmer heimer pre-insulin knowledge read awesome very similar to keto that's awesome i'll go check it out what what what, 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 please wait. What can I do after correcting my metabolism? Um, if you regulate your insulin, your estrogen, you will see that your body will start dropping body fat without having to do something extra. See what I mean? Like you don't have to do things extra if your metabolism is completely healed. And that's the problem with people is they're so impatient, patient to lose weight. They start depriving themselves in intermittent fasting and doing all these crazy things too soon and they don't ever really become ketotic regardless if the glucometer says that they're producing ketones you could do eggshells miranda for your your uh eggshell egg supplements for your uh potassium i mean uh did you say potassium? no you said calcium Oh, let's see, how does a good night's sleep look like? How long should be there? Oh, Lord. I think I should probably go because you guys know I have a tendency to just continue to ask, answer questions. There are people eating high protein and they are in ketosis. No, they're not. Why do you believe it's, they're, they're not in ketosis. I'm sorry, you're wrong. Did you check their glucometer? No. Did you check their glucometer? No, because they didn't present their numbers. No. So people can tell you whatever they want to. But until people are like, follow my day, watch me measure my glucose, I'm going to eat a shite ton of protein. Now let's do a glucometer check on camera. Otherwise, don't believe people on the internet, including me. That's why I continue to do live streams to be consistent and consistent and consistent and physically consistent with the knowledge.
when you're a beginner to be keto adapted, you want to have blood sugar between 69 and 80 milligrams per deciliter and a 1.8 to 3.0 millimolar. And I beg to see somebody who eats a lot of protein who gets those numbers because they won't. Boom! And then have them go work out with me, even if their numbers show a false positive, and then go work out with me and let's see how much energy you have on a lot of protein. And then let's check your urine to see if it's darker in color to see if it's putting a stress on your kidneys. Just be really careful with what you hear on the internet. If it sounds easy, don't listen to them. Because everything I say is like, guys, question everything. Look at everything. Don't trust everything. Learn about physiology. And if somebody's saying that to you, probably you might want to listen to them more if they're not like making it sound easy. But if these mother suckers are like, oh my God, I just did this and it was amazing. And da 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 Then don't believe the hype. Not with the intermittent fasters. One of my favorite people in the entire world is, is like, his first name is P and his last name is A. He's so brilliant. He starts intermittent fasting. He looks so gluconeogenic in my opinion these days. And he is a genius. This dude's a genius. We all believe in our own hype. Every freaking doctor from from veganism to keto to carnivore to whomever, everybody's subjective. Everybody puts their opinion on what they believe is fact. So question everyone and believe no one. So question everyone. What are the effects on working out, fasted drinking, and coffee for my friend who can stop, can't stop doing it? Um, thyroid disorder, hair falling out, a low testosterone or estrogen dominance, lethargy, adrenal insufficiencies. I mean, the list goes on and on because they are looking for a quick fix, but end up causing more problems. And I've seen it because see, I've actually coached thousands of people, thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands. And a lot of these people on the internet talking about keto, like some of these guys are all shredded and ripped. They haven't done that. Plus my butt is 51 years of age. That says something, someone who's done strict keto, full natty. It's a diet trend, yeah. That's why I want people to question things. Well, someone said I should do seven cups of vegetables. Okay, we'll do seven cups of vegetables. Let's see what happens to your poop, okay? Are you gassy, are you farty? Like, are you tired? Okay. Uh, this person says urine, urine strips. Then use the urine strips. I don't care what you do. But if people make it sound easy, I'm telling you it's not easy. And the only reason why I came up to this understanding is because of my high meat is, is rotten slowly. You guys want to see it? I'll show you. And that reminds me to open up the cap. Because if you don't open up the cap, it might develop botulism. So you've got to let air in. So it's starting to turn colors now. There you go. There is my high meat. See that? Beep. You got to open it up. Doesn't smell yet. It's starting to smell a little cheesy. When it comes to carnism, I'm not the expert. When it comes to keto, I'm the expert, okay? So even with me now trying to do high meat, I am learning myself. And I want to try it myself before I start talking about it with you guys. How long are you going to age? I don't know. <laughs> but I'm going to take care of myself as I do age. Couldn't eat high meat. You don't have to. I'm going to do it. Okay. Hey, Steph. I'm type 1 diabetic for almost 40 years. My A1C numbers are 5.5. Still a little high, but probably better than 7, right? 0. 0.0. Currently because of keto. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. Uh, what is the best possible A1C number? Thanks, Tom. Oh, I didn't know it was Tom. Okay. <laughs> Calling you what, what all the time, Tom. <laughs> um... You know, if you got your A1C down to 5.0, you'd be jumping on the ceiling. So I think a 5.0 would be awesome. 
Hi, I mean, I mean fermented the high meat. Sorry. Oh, I don't even remember what you said. Sorry. My brain's already, I was thinking about the, the A1C. I mean, if you can get a 4.9 on keto and have energy, that'd be amazing with your ketones not going over a 3.2. That'd be amazing. Oh, thank you, Deborah. Deborah, see, because without Deborah, you guys, I'll read something. I'll read it wrong. I'll miss what people say. You know, I get the stress that I don't want to go too long, and then I'll look at my phone and I'll miss something. Um, I'm going to let it age for two months. i got to remember to remember to put down the date on the jar uh, before I taste it the first time. But I'll probably really start trying it after the third month because I'm new to it. So second, third month, probably third month, I'll, I'll let it uh, age. How long are you going? Okay, Siege. You watch Good Morning Mythical. What? Watch Good Mythical Morning. Never even heard of it. Sorry, Sydney. Hey, girl. Hey, what's up, Wendy? What's up? Hey, girl. Hey. Um, but what if you do low carb, 20 net, moderate protein, high fat, and you still have high glucose? Because that's not ketotic. I don't know. That's a, that's a long one. I could answer it, but I'm trying to get off actually. Is oatmeal, no, oatmeal is, is garbage. Oatmeal is for horses. It's not for people. Oats, oats, oats are for grains. They're for, for ruminants. They're for side chewers, <laughs> goats and donkeys and stuff. It's just pure starch. Get rid of it. Sorry. I don't mean to say it that way. You just learning about does, does aging make meat easier to digest? I would assume so because it's being fermented, right? So it's supposed to be easy. I mean, it turns into slimy goo. So yeah. But the, the reason why I'm doing it is because the bacteria growing on it, we need bacteria. Uh, and we even need, the, we, we sterilize everything too much. What YouTubers do you watch? Um, I like to watch science documentaries. I don't like to watch YouTubers anymore. They, I just get really annoyed. If I'm if I'm researching random things about physiology, but I'm not. Oh, Natasha, what's her name? Nora Gagatis his older videos, definitely. Steve Finney, Jeff Fulick, some of their videos. Peter Atia's older videos. Natasha, what's her name? She's really cool. But I just, I get bored watching them because like they're human and there's like a stop on how much, how much you can learn. You see, I know at Vichy, 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 I struggle every time I say I'm going to do it and gag. It's just been so long since I had meat. Is there any way to help with uh, hating the way meat tastes stuff? I would start with fish or eggs, you know, people, it's a mental thing, but uh um for true gaggers you can you can numify the gag response by taking a toothbrush and rubbing it on the back of your tongue every day and the it stops the response it really trains the body not to gag that's all i know otherwise strengthen your neocortex and the synopsis strengthen this because you need the nutrients from it Keep doing what you're doing, um, like your Q and A's. Ah, thank you, Sydney Wilson. Thank you, I appreciate it. Sorry, guys. I don't mean to sound like snarky or sarcasm, sarcastic or sar sarcastic and not sarcasm. Odd question is, am okay on keto? Yes. Okay, guys. Uh, will you be adding carnivore diet to your online meal plans? Um, it will never be cardio. Oh, cardio. Uh, it'll never be carnivore it will always be keto carnivore it will never ever ever be strict carnivore I was a lot more research before and i've thought about that too i'm going to actually update all my plans there's a lot of updation right the updation creation of updation needs needs to to start and i need to finish the book and uh, then i'm going to recreate a bunch of new plans including workouts i'm probably going to run another 30-day challenge I'm um, going to do a bunch of fun stuff. Okay, keto carnivore. Yeah, but I'm not going to call it keto carnivore because then I feel like I'm mocking something. I'll make it stuff. I'll make it stuff without the veggies. Oats are great. Yeah, they destroy your gut. They literally destroy your gut. 
Okay, I hear okay, I hear you. It's like a kick in the stomach hearing oats be criticized. You cling on to the G suggestion of his word. Vichy, I'm sorry. Plants have we're, first of all, we're eating Frankenstein vegetables, okay? Because every single thing, um, I'm getting like DMs on my Instagram and it's so annoying. Sorry, because I just get questions all day long to the point where I'm like, no more questions. And ironically, I'm on a live stream. But you guys, plants don't have teeth. They have anti-nutrients. And people get sick on them. We're eating these plants that are Frankensteined out. And everything's been... Stop. Stop. No. Oh, Everything's been um, altered when man got its hands on it. Selectively bred and hybridized. And then we're eating these plants... Stop, please stop. Stop DMing me. You know when people DM you like they could just DM, DM you one time, but then they DM one line and then they'll do it again and then another. So I just keep getting Instagram notifications nonstop. More. In the last one, I should do a screenshot or put them in. Please help me, she writes. And another one. Dama, zero two. I wonder if she's on my YouTube right now. Okay. Um, but please stop DMing me on Instagram until I get off. Uh, hard work ahead to make the changes needed. So pumped for the book. Yeah, it's going to be freaking amazing. They're all whole food organic. Please stop. This person, you see this? Over. Stop. Okay, let me proofread for you when you do the updates. Okay, thank you. Does eggs cause estrogen issues in women? If you, no, 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 not directly, no. Bye, Alex. Hard work ahead, yeah, there's a lot of hard work ahead, yep. No, you're right, thank you for your time today, we all appreciate it. Thank you, thanks for answering all the questions. You are the best, definite thumbs up. Thank you, XX, from Belgium. Ah, I didn't know you're from Belgium. Are you from Antwerpen or from Brussels? No, yeah, Brussels. Brussels or Antwerp, and I go the north or south. Um, it's hard, guys. It's hard to exist on the internet. It's not easy, and you're never gonna please everyone. Some people are gonna like your personality. Some people are gonna say think that you're too, you know, um, I don't know, too much of yourself. Uh, I'll let you guys know when the book comes out. Thank you for all your help. Have made a big difference in my life. Aw, thanks. Is it? Asa. Asa. Thank you, MKKG. I really appreci appreciate taking your time to do live streams. Uh, Steph, so what do you what do? What do you do to substitute for when every great while you crave a good old fashioned donut? I don't ever crave it, crave it. That's those Sandy, them days are gone. I actually will look at that stuff and think it's pure poison. Like my eyes have literally changed. I look at people eat that food. There is no envy. There is no like, I wish I could eat that. Because when you start to learn about processed foods and even plant source foods, I feel sorry for people who eat that. That's what I feel. Literally. I look at people eat that food. I'm like, and they're inflamed, their faces are bloated, they've got broken blood vessels and dark circles around their eyes and rashes and white tongue and dry, scaly, everything. And I look at them and I'm like, God, I feel so sorry for them. That's how I feel when I watch people eat that food. Literally, I feel sorry for them. Like they don't know what I know. I, I wish that they, they, they got it. I've lost friends on keto, didn't need, didn't need them. I don't even care. Like nobody, no, all the people I know, but this is true. I, you know, I've done streams of me going out to, and eating with people. Any teasers for the keto book? Mm, not now. Close. When I'm, when I'm done and I'm going to start talking about it no more. Trust me, I'm going to blast everything. Like it's going to be nonstop. The book, the book, the book, the book, the book. Cause I've been writing it forever. I definitely love your energy and knowledge. Will you come to Ireland? Definitely. When you come to the UK. Yeah. I want to go come to Ireland. I've been there many, many years ago and I love it. I want to come back. Definitely. Any thoughts on uh, skating the Upland Skate Park in the 80s? That pipe was gigantic. Yep, right? They had the square bowl, right, Tom? I um, actually skated Upland a few times before they closed it down. Yep. 
got to watch Tony Hawk do his McTwist in the corner? Or was it, no, no, it was Mike McGill by one of the last Upland competitions. I think I went to one and there was one more and they closed it down. And I got to skate Upland. It was amazing, you guys, back in the day. Amazing, amazing. You definitely have the haters out there. I have argued with women about you on other YouTube channels for 45 minutes at a time. <laughs> but the thing is, like, it's okay. They can believe whatever they want to believe. Like, let them drink that Kool-Aid because they will never look as good as I do. And I don't mean even in a, uh, you know, value of attraction. I only mean in physical health. Never. They will never, ever. So they can argue all they want. They can argue all they want. All I'm saying, come work out with my 51 year old ass with a busted leg. Anyone who's like, other women are like, oh, she's so lame, she's ridiculous. She jumps around on a half top. Oh my God, come work out with me. Let's get it on. I would love to do a conversation with YouTuber Frank Tifano. Um, I don't know the guy, he seems pretty decent, but he called me, uh, what is it, stupid. He called me stupid, but that's okay because he doesn't know me, right? He called me stupid. He's a raw convert. I know who he is. I know who he is. And on his stream, he called me stupid. So I was like, oh, you should, you should collaborate with Stephanie. He's like, oh yeah, she's stupid. And she, uh, I checked out her website though. <laughs> Maybe he saw old videos with me jumping around. Homeboy called me stupid. A 20 something year old called me stupid. That's okay. That's his perception. Me too. I do feel the way to, what is it? I do feel that way too. I've done so well on keto and I feel so, so that way. What I've only have a wicked, oh, you're talking about crave, crave for that stuff. So infrequently, but I agree. My eyes have so changed to, oh, that's awesome, Sandy. Yeah, I really don't crave it. I really don't. I'll look at it and be like, this stuff's nasty. It's just nasty. I get frustrated that we've been so lied to and that our health has been compromised because of misinformation. So, you know, all I'm trying to do is catch up to all the new things that I'm learning. Like I'm trying the high meat because I've heard other people. And what I love about the YouTube carnivore people is that, um, and actually I think I appreciate the carnivore YouTubers more than the keto ones who are like, just like me, like a normal person who's not a PhD because those people have had, all of them have had these horrible autoimmune gut skin like issues. And then they do the carnivore diet. And so for them to do that, there's gotta be a lot of research involved to be sure that they're making the right decision. And I love that about those people. I wish some of the experts would be more open-minded to other things because all the experts are still not really talking about anti-nutrients and plants and the, the problematic uh, problems of it. They're still just talking sort of the science of keto. And I think that's boring uh, to just talk about the science. I really love the carnivore people that they are more willing to talk about their issues and they're experimenting more. They're not, the carnivore people aren't eating freaking, uh, you know, uh, craft freaking cream cheese. They're not doing that. So, um, and, and talking about bulletproof coffee as they do their carnivore diet. I really kind of like that about that. Those YouTubers, you know, I don't know who they are. Like, like with Frank, he seems like a cool dude. I don't know him at all. Like, and I think that he, somebody like Frank or even like Milk Jar or even Sverie, like those guys, they do some stuff that I, it's not my cup of tea, but like, I'm not hating on them. I'm like, I'm like, okay, okay. They learn into some extra stuff that I feel a lot of the experts aren't, they're not going there. They don't go into front gut, hind gut, sacrum, uh, stomach acid, uh, uh, you know, the acidity, like how we're, how we're able to go and... I think it was me watching Milk Jar a lot of him just eating constantly raw, rotten meat and then trying to understand what are you doing? So that's what I want to say about those people. But I'm a keto person. I'm not a carn carnivore people. And I'm always going to stress for people to get the 
fattiest cuts and to keep their fats over 200. And to, because some of the carnivore people, I think they're eating like a kilo or they're eating up to two pounds of meat. And I'm not having any of my clients do that. I'm not having them eat two pounds of meat. I'm having them to keep their, um, you know, unless they really eat, unless they're eating pork belly where the, um, where the protein is much lower, but I'm always trying to get them to supplement more fats, more tallow, more ghee or butter or, you know, uh, lard. I'm like, get that in, get the over 200 grams of fat and don't have your protein get too high. I'm interested in the carnivore thing now. Yeah, um, that's, I feel that carnivore likes not eating any plants because plants can heal you in many ways. They're just not, they don't give you f fuel and there's a lot of anti-nutrients in them that frack so many people up. I told you, really good friend of mine, he actually was a client years ago, he ate a little bit of vegetables with some mushrooms and it sent him to the toilet for two weeks because he's been doing strict carnivore. He can't eat vegetables. He can't. He cannot. He cannot. He cannot. So I'm like, bro, don't eat any plants. But for myself, I could eat, I could dump bags of spinach down my mouth. So I must have the oxalobacter bacteria to break down the oxalates or else how can I eat so many bags of of uh, spinach and be absolutely fine where you somebody else eats spinach and they go running they need to go to the hospital so we've got to learn more about our individual health the missing of diamine oxidase a lot of you guys are missing the the uh, enzymes to break down anti-nutrients in foods you don't sleep well you have leaky gut so that's my lane my lane is leaky gut small intestinal bacterial overgrowth like that's my lane let's fix all this autoimmunity let's do keto so I'm not really, really um, a fan of doing strict carnivore without really moderating how much fat you're getting in. No nut butters. No, that's a big no. Especially now, you guys. I'm really careful with plant source foods because so many guys are sick and react to them. No coffee. What do you think about... Okay, we read that. Uh, most veggies bother me. Lettuce and peppers don't. See? Keto diamond, that's a... Like, exa there's a great example. Not And not everybody's... Not everybody's going to react to the high histamine foods, right? Because if you have a, uh, a, is a diamine oxidase uh, enzyme missing, maybe all the histamine foods bother you, or maybe it's just, you know, certain foods, or maybe it's just the eggs, or maybe it's not the eggs, or maybe, I don't know. Everybody's different on how they react to certain plant source foods. It's great. Yeah, butter and tea is great. Thank you, Deborah. There you go. Cook some thick chicken thard, thard, chicken, chicken thigh and some lard. And you know what? Graduate to the chicken freaking liver afterwards. Hi, Stephanie. Is chamomile tea okay? Yeah, I prefer loose leaf because, you know, I don't like the mycotoxin, the mold on the bags. Keto is specific to each person. There are so many keto friendly things. I just can't eat and stay in ketosis. Well, keto diamond, I would say that it's not really, I would just say that the, the different types of uh, leaky gut, and histamine issues is varying, totally varying per person. But like the macros and all that, it's it's very similar, especially if you start off. Your glucose tolerance is pretty low in the beginning, and then over time, it becomes stronger, especially if you are an athletic person and follow circadian rhythm and breathe. Which reminds me, guys, I'm not drinking enough water, which is annoying me. Yeah, the protein adds up fast. That's why you got to add, Jessica, a lot of fat. So when I eat liver or beef heart, I'm just having that much, right? With a lot of fat. So I don't have to overeat it. Um, I'm going to try some liver. Yeah, take your liver and marinate it in butter if you're going to cook it so it doesn't turn green because the iron will make it turn green. Saute it. Use some spring onions. Spice it well. Otherwise, people are trip out on the taste. I love it, though. I found lard at my local store, but it contains B A B H A, B H A. You mean I've never? What is B H A? Uh, is that bad? Sounds like it is. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, uh, Richard, thank you, Richard. Thank you, thank you so much, Richard. When is our consultation? Must be coming up soon. Okay, what's your opinion on the other side of the spectrum for fruitarian diets? Jasmine. Look at my face. That's my opinion. Okay, 
it's buffering bad. I'm gonna go anyway. Uh, I took you, you. What is it? I took you favorite your favorite snack advice and ate that with butter and flat steak. How was it, Jessica? The seventh. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, spring onions and seasoned fry and great butter. Yeah, and just spice it. Okay, guys, I gotta go. I keep telling. I told myself. 30 minutes, and here I am doing an hour past what I wanted to again. I'm so bad at this. I'm the worst. The worst. Thank you, everyone, for joining the chat. Um, I try to do it every other day, although don't. Okay, spring onions and seasoned fry and butter are great. Yeah. Okay, I read that. BGA? You mean B BPA? I don't know. My live lives are super long, too. Oh, you have live streams? Who is it? Who has super live streams? Keto Diamond. Oh, I didn't know you did live streaming. Awesome. You should DM my, your live stream channel on my Instagram at Stephanie Ketogenic so I can go and check it out. I'd love to see your live. BHA. Pulated hydroxyl used as a preservative. Yeah, don't. No, no. Horrible. No. If I can't even pronounce it now. Thank you, Sandy. Thank you, Christina. Thank you, Barbie. And thank you, Deborah. And nice to see you, Keto Diamond. And I'll see you soon, Richard. Thanks. I've been following you for years and have adapted some things, but to but time to to dive all the way in. Yes, Shimo, that would be amazing. To not like because once knowledge is infinite power, uh, self empowerment. Once you freaking understand. Like someone says, oh, do you feel like, oh, kind of, or when you see donuts, I'm like, no, man, this stuff looks nasty. I have a really good memory taste of it, but being 51 and seeing all the damage it did to my body, uh -huh, I'm good, thanks. You know, you've just subscribed. Yay. Whew, okay, guys. Um, thank you for, you guys, don't forget to uh, joining the, the live stream. Don't forget to push the notification bell so you can get when I go live again. Peace out, <laughs> Sandy. Because it got some energy, energy, energy. Woo! And I'm a little nutty, but, you know, you can be that way when you get older. Thanks for all the good info. Have a good night. Thank you, Carrie. Live long, prosper on keto. Absolutely. Okay, you are the real... Thanks, Stephanie. Your knowledge about the human anatomy is amazing and your passion for helping others is refreshing. Blessings, Helen. Thank you. And like I've said many times before, a lot of people don't know me, so I come across as a certain way online. But I'm in my 50s now. Like, what you're triggered at... I, I watch trolls hammer people in live streams. And they react to it, and I get it because I do as well. But then afterwards, I'm like, I don't care. Do you know what I mean? It's just... It's a weird, weird world that we live in now. I'm gonna push the bell. What? Gute Nacht, Christine. Gute Nacht. Or as the Swedish say, good night. It's very much easier. Det är mycket lättare att säga good night istället gute Nacht. Donuts and cookies are evil. They are, I mean, look. Food is great, can taste really well, but like if you learn how to take whole foods and season them well and prepare them well, like for even me to eat raw meat, and I'm, people are like, is it raw if you put salt on it? I'm like, well, last time I checked, spray raw. But because um, I'm putting, it's not preserving it if I'm eat, putting salt on it on the spot and not putting it in a container to preserve it. Uh, so, um, guten Abend. I guess that's good evening, right? Guten Abend, guten Morgen. Uh, I only know like, uber den Tisch, unter den Tisch. Jensi Schnabel, Pimmel Nase. Och, uh, buenos, uh, buenos noches. Gracias. Buenos noches. I gotta get rid of this American accent. I can kind of do it with Swedish. You can have prota. Svensk, precis. Nej, inte så bra. Men inte så amerikansk. Jag låter inte så amerikansk när jag pratar svensk. Yeah. But when I try to speak other languages, it's a hot mess. Who can I learn from about the meat thing stuff? Um, I think you have to learn from all of them. You know, 
all those carnivore people have a little bit of you know good information if anything to watch how they eat their raw meat you know there's even a this vegetable police guy who went from strict veganism he had so many issues like colitis beyond measure and then he switched over to a carnivore diet i really watch like watching him sometimes to watch the mistakes he makes because he's more honest right he's just went carnivore he went from strict vegan and you can see oh i ate this meat in an a thai he's in thailand or something oh a thai supermarket because i've been to asia many times and it's like i'm very particular the stuff meat i buy there honey I'm very particular okay because i don't want grass fed i mean corn fed nothing from from the supermarket and try to eat that raw oof mm -mm, child nope so I watch him make mistakes and I watch him have low energy or I'll watch that like some people will have heart palps because they don't get enough potassium in their diet if their potassium reserves are already low. Your brother threw snakes on you? Maybe to numb you to the snakes. But uh, yeah, there's just a lot of learning to, you know, you guys, I'm learning, but I'm really good at deconstructing other people's knowledge and then you like applying it to my clients and then seeing if it works and if it works cool i'll talk about it which is the reason why i started talking about the carnivore diets because i was having my clients try it on the keto course page um and it was really interesting to see their feedback and then me trying to study it from other people and then i'm not i'm not listening to anybody and i've never done that as the bible i'm like okay well that makes sense what they're saying okay right even Dr. Berg has some information that can be beneficial that's not keto, but I'll take little snippets of what people say and I'll be like, wow, this is really great information. I can apply this and make it applicable to what I'm doing. And then the other stuff that they do that I'm not like, I can't vibe with, I'm like, it's cool. I'll take what I need and then the rest I'll throw away and I think people should do that with me as well or anyone else that they follow. And I never just follow one person because so many people have different uh, ways to try things or, you know, this morning I was listening to Gary Taubes and I was like, yeah, Gary's really, really smart, but sorry guys, Gary is constantly talking about, um, obesity. And I like to talk about autoimmunity and people who have like freaked out gut reactions and sensitivities and thyroid issues and multiple sclerosis. I don't want to just talk about obesity because if you can remedy all the autoimmunity, or the leptin resistance or whatever type of issues they have, um, then they can not be obese. So, you know, I just take cherry pick what I want out of everything. Even some of the vegans, I was like listening to this vegan scientist woman talk about um, cooked veggies in comparison to raw. And I was like, this is gonna be great because they eat veggies all day long. So they're really gonna study how the body reacts to cook versus a raw and all of the ant, uh, the anti nutrients in them, and how this works this way and that works that way, and so even I'll follow some vegan experts, not for veganism, but to hear their understanding of them, the scientists deconstructing some of the plant source foods. Doctor Baker's cool, but I don't suggest his approach. It, it's not really keto macro centered. Okay, I don't even know who he is. Is a two raw milk made for uh, made into kefir? Okay. Elisa, a lot of people don't react very well even into the, the A2 raw uh, kefir, but you can try it. You know, it doesn't hurt to try it. It's going to have a lot of good beneficial bacteria if you don't react to the uh, the wear casein in it, small amounts. Stacy, avocados have really high potassium. Yes, they do. A lot, a lot of carnivore people overcook their food too. Yeah, but I'm following the raw carnivore people. Like, I'm not following the cook people. I'm not. I only follow people who eat raw. I mean, well, Frank, I have looked at some of his uh, videos, and he does lightly cook some of his food. But besides him, I don't follow anybody else doing the carnivore diet who cooks their food. I mean, cooking food is not good for the It's It's just, it's, it's not good. Somebody wrote on my channel, you can unlock a lot of nutrients in cooked meat. I was like, what are you talking about? That's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard of in my life. Plant source foods, absolutely. You boil spinach, you're gonna unlock the potassium. Meat, you're killing it. You're killing the enzymes, you're killing the, and I'm not I'm not raw, you guys. I have a little bit of raw meat each day because I'm trying to get good bacteria in my, my gut. I'm doing that flat meat raw and it's turning colors. 
because I forgot to put the top back on it. This is what I'm eating raw every day, right? That's what I'm eating raw every day. It's amazing. That's what I'm eating raw. But I'm also having cooked, I'm having cooked liver and cooked heart. Heart's really hard to eat raw. This stuff is tough. But in the liver, I sear it straight up. Yeah, and it's just, you know, I just cook it very quickly so it's not as, like, slimy. Um, but this I eat fully raw. And I will do for now on. It's been about a week of doing this, and I will probably do it forever now. Yes, this is the belly of the uh, cow. And it's very soft meat. Like, I just cut it in real thin strips, put a little, uh, uh, little salt, little spice on it. Amazing. Oh, Whole Foods. It's pastured, grass-fed, belly, meat. Where do you find your macros for heart? I don't know. Go Google it. Butchers don't know. That's for darn sure. Sometimes when you do Google, you have to do like five different Google uh, assessments and then choose the round off the number of what seems most logical. Oxtail is amazing. Amazing, y'all. Please do oxtail. Are you into the latest biohacker trends? Nope. Nope. I'm actually feeling like they're those... Mm -mm. Yeah, the infrared brought out quite melasma on my skin. And I'm like... And I was blasting myself with this expensive infrared light. So... Be careful for those with melasma to not use infrared light. Would I come to NorCal? Probably. What about E. coli? I don't believe that you, you grow E. coli on fresh pastured meats. No. Or botulism. If you don't, if it doesn't get any air on it, if it gets too much air out on it and dries out, if any bacteria somehow is any type of, I'm not an expert, bye bye, what these people say, I've been eating this for me for a week, I'm good, and these people have been bone marrow, I've been doing bone broth, which a lot of people don't say, like, don't do broth, because you're cooking all of the properties out for so long, but yes, I'll do bone marrow in a broth, I'm not going to eat that raw, maybe I will in the future, but right now, eh, Okay, I need to stop, okay? An hour and a half. I was supposed to do this 30 minutes. I went an hour over time. How do you cook oxtail? You can put it in your bone broth. Uh, uh, oxtail could give you heartburn because you cut, could have a sensitivity to it, unfortunately. All right, because you shouldn't have heartburn on it. All right, guys, so I need to shut up. I need to go. You guys are pounding me with questions, and I'm supposed to go, and um, I'm a sucker to keep answering. So have a wonderful evening or morning, you guys, and peace out. Yes. My keto course is through my website, which is stephanieperson.com. Pound the like button, yes, and don't forget to like up the stream, even for those who watch the replay. And uh, what else? Yes, I'm working on the book, and I'm learning. What else? I think that's it. Oh, my Instagram is stephanieketogenic, and I do stories every day on interesting information. Bye, guys. Thank you, Deborah, again for always having my back. You always have my back. Thank you, Paula. And thank you. Good night, uh, Jessica and Shimo and MKKG and JC. Thank you. Okay, guys. Thank you so much. I'm out. Peace. Yes. Thank you. Always, you guys. Thank you to Deborah.